Mutations, Cleveland, and the rest of the world. Welcome to another edition of 360 Info Network. I'm Vince Robinson. Our broadcast partner, Hamptonio, is out in the field preparing for an event that will take place later this afternoon. He's going to be joining us towards the end of the show to give you more details about it. As you know, he's doing a marketplace and a lecture today. Uh, Sar Amhotep will be speaking at somewhere around 430. It's going to take place at the T Squared Honors Academy, and that's at 18450 uh, South Miles Road. There is a roadblock coming off of Warrensville Center Road today, so you will need to go up to Lee Road and access South Miles from Lee Road, and you'll take it over there near the uh, complex where the word church is. It's 18450. Uh, South Miles Road. And today it's Asara Imhotep. Tomorrow it is Dr. T. Owens Moore. So Dr. Moore was with us last week. Uh, this week we have a very special guest. He's no stranger to 360 Info Network. And I could read a long detailed bio. Uh, it's about his career as an ethnomusicologist. But Dr. Craig Woodson is also a historian and he has a connection to one of the most prominent black historians in the history of our country. And I'm speaking of Dr. Carter G. Woodson, how they are related. I'm gonna let him explain that to you because obviously there are at least some differences in terms of their appearance. But I'm happy to say that Dr. Woodson definitely has some spirit and perhaps some genetic material that he shares with Dr. Woodson. And uh, we are so happy to have him with us today. So Dr. Woodson, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you, Vince, great to be back. All right. You have a connection to Cleveland that has brought you here uh, on several occasions. And I think uh, you mentioned to me that you are going to be participating in something that will happen in Sandusky. So why don't you give us a little background on your relationship to the Association uh, for the Study of African-American Life and History? Um, yes. Well, <clears throat> I, uh, I didn't know about the organization, um, actually, uh, most of my life until um, um, I saw a picture of Carter G. Woodson on a stamp uh, in 1984. I'd come back from three years of research in Africa and Ghana and did my PhD on African drumming. Um, and I saw the stamp and I went to my dad and, and uh, said, uh, uh, who are the Black Woodsons? And uh, never occurred to me uh, to, to uh, check into that, although I knew Carter Woodson's name, it just never, uh, uh, you know, came to my attention. And he said, well, it's in our genealogy and it's over there on the shelf. Um, read it. And uh, so in the first six pages, it did say that my ancestors in 1619 uh, purchased six of the first, actually 32, I understand now, uh, Africans that came uh, off the white lion. And uh, that uh, information was devastating. I was very ashamed. I happened to be a member of the Beam Foundation at the time on the board uh, with Betty Cox, who uh, was a very good friend of Mayor Bradley. Um, and uh, I couldn't tell her for many months and finally told her. And she said, well, that's interesting because my best friend is Aileen Woodson and her husband is Edgar Woodson. And he is related to uh, Carter G. Woodson, a great nephew. So uh, she said, do you want to meet him? So that's what I did in, uh, in the late 80s. And uh, that was a very uh, moving uh, initial experience. And we, we got to know each other. We realized after many years that we were indeed family and, and thought of each other as family. I moved to Ohio in 89. And eventually I said I wanted to have an apology ceremony which I had in, uh, which we, we put together and invited uh, Ghanaians, uh, Asante people who were participants in the enslavement um, from Africa. And uh, my friend Sam Apia and his family came and uh, we had the meeting. Uh, it was at the church of Reverend James Lawson, uh, the well-known uh, minister who was the confidant and assistant to Martin Luther King. And uh, he took my hand and when we met and he said, we need millions of these ceremonies. That was his first comment, very meaningful. And I'm still in touch with him. Um, and uh, so that was the beginning. Um, we stayed uh, in close contact. I didn't pay 
uh, much attention to the relevance of that meeting un, until uh, many years later, but um, I did a presentation at uh, uh, Lemoyne Owen Historical Black College in uh, Memphis, and there were members of uh, the Asala organization there, and they said, well, you should present your story at the National Asala organization. And the Asala is the Association of the Study of African American Life and History that was started uh, by Carter Woodson in uh, 1915. Uh, of course, Black History started as a week in uh, 1926, uh, celebrating uh, the birthdays of uh, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. That's why it was in that month. And um, so the, the, the story goes on to uh, meeting uh, Barbara Dunn uh, at a solid charge of membership. And she invited me to come and give my story, which I did in uh, 2000, what was it, 15, I guess. And it was an amazing, uh, amazing uh, reception. People were very welcoming and interested uh, at the conference. And uh, that was the beginning of my association with Asala. So that's the, the long backstory of Asala. So now I'm, um, as I mentioned just before, I'm uh, getting ready to do a couple of papers at our upcoming conference in September um, in uh, Jacksonville. And that will be, um, a very meaningful, obviously a meaningful time and place for the for the event. Um, but uh, I am president of our local chapter uh, branch, actually it's called, in Cleveland. And uh, Lynn Hampton is the vice president, and we uh, we're looking for members. We'd love to have some more members uh, join. And uh, we're I'm working on a landing page so people can actually pay their memberships, the national and the uh, local membership at one time. I'm in touch with a, a gentleman named uh, David Wilkins in uh, Minnesota, Florida, who has a tremendous Asala branch site. Uh, uh, they're incorporated. They've got <laughs> they've got nonprofit status, and uh, he advised me uh, recently that they have an all-in-one way of paying all the dues. Uh, so I'm looking into that. Um, so we can make it easy for people to join. That's the bottom line. But we're we have uh, presentations, and uh, Gaidi and Kruma is a uh, is a great help as a representative of Asala in our in our region, the uh, region of the United States. Um, so that's the that's the long and short story of that uh, organization. But there's so much to learn at Asala.org, if you want. Yes. To know. You can go to solid.org and get a lot more information about this organization. And, and I did just that yesterday, Dr. Woodson, and I was really impressed uh, with the faces and the people who are a part of this organization. Uh, it was just kind of blew me away. Uh, could you tell me about some of these folks? And I know, you know, many of them are educators. Many of them are in the academic realm. So they, there may not be any familiarity on the part of our listeners and viewers, but can you tell us some of the folks who are involved? Yeah, um, um, well, the, the, they're academics, basically. Lots of academics, and that's one of the pushes that we're, we're trying to stretch uh, to student populations. And we've been given scholarships at each branch to bring in uh, four students uh, to join. Um, but uh, you know some uh, some of the some of the members are uh, the members are are very broad based. Uh, they go across the spectrum. But as I mentioned, David Wilkins uh, in in Florida, uh, uh, Michelle Oliver Woodson is another Woodson relative in Virginia, and um, uh, you know it, it goes on. Uh, Deb Taylor, uh, Elizabeth Woodson. Uh, what we're trying to do in the, on the Woodson side, uh, just to jump to that subject briefly, is um, as a result of my, uh, my meeting, um, I was contacted by National Public Radio. And I'll, I'll just jump to that subject, if you don't mind, for a second, because I want to make sure I get it in. Uh, and the article is on um, NPR Woodson, and you will see a wonderful 32-minute uh, broadcast about the the meeting and the significance of of the pushback uh, against um, the, the one-sided history that's being told and and and, and uh, people are asking to be told uh, 
uh, in this country. So that's the second side uh, of the of the black side of the, the history of this country does not appear in textbooks now, as you well know, as much as it needs to be. So there's a full story that needs to be told. My family did not tell the whole story. And one of the things that the NPR article does is uh, points to this fact that this is what needs to happen. And that's what our group, uh, Woodson Group, uh, is trying to tell to the, to the larger audience. Um, uh, the United States and the world, if you will, but we're we're a group of black and white Woodsons, and we're up at about um, probably over seventy now that have contacted me as a result of this NPR piece uh, and want to be uh, active. In other words, anti-racist active, uh, implying that there's uh, action involved, and so. We're trying to figure out what's next. And um, we have a lot of proposals of how to take this and using the inspiration from Reverend Lawson of how he worked uh, uh, with his uh, philosophy from Gandhi back in, uh, in the 50s and 60s. So that, that's, um, you know, uh, that's one of them. I'll just mention Perro Dagovby is, the, is the, pretty much the world expert on Carter G. Woodson. Uh, I think he's at Michigan State, but uh, wonderful scholar, um, and he's written extensively on Carter G. Woodson, uh, is very prominent at the conference. So, but if you go to the website, you'll see the whole list of uh, so many people that are uh, the experts, uh, black history uh, uh, experts and um, historians and lay people, but yeah, it's all on the website. Yes. Well, I think it it uh, should be mentioned as as we approach Juneteenth that uh, history is extremely important, and um, I was thinking about this yesterday as, as as I was looking at doing the show today, and that's just the whole idea of remembering. And you mentioned that uh, you know we're getting a one sided view of history. Uh, we're we're facing things like bans on critical race theory. We're seeing books removed from schools and uh, just basically giving people reasons not to remember. But when I when I look at what you shared with us this morning about the revelation that you got when you had that conversation with your father and the impact that it had on your life. And then we flat fast forward to today and you see this this linkage between family and it's a multiracial situation and it's done in, in a space of understanding the importance of remembering, the importance of telling the story uh, and the importance of moving things forward. You talked about what do we do now? Because it's so important that we take action because there has to be some corrective action to to um you know to address the things that have happened in the past you look back at your family history and you realize that your family played a role in the enslavement of africans and so you took that to heart and you didn't just look the other way and you know and then you end up in ghana and i i remember quite vividly you telling me and us the story about how you were in that drum circle how they wanted you to dance that just brings me to this, Dr. Woodson, because I didn't ask you this question last time, but I'm going to ask you the question now. Was it possible for you to dance in that moment? Um, you know, yes, <laughs> because uh, I could drum. And as I mentioned, in this village that I didn't know uh about when we were going there, the, the backstory is uh, going to a village with my colleagues at the University of uh, Science and Technology, and we had a, a, a an after hours uh, dance group uh, led by Frank Mensa, a very phenomenal uh, dancer from the National Dance Ensemble, teaching there. And he said, we're going to this village. And I got there and I, I realized that I knew the drumming. It was called Akom, and it was the drumming of the fetish uh, religion, the, the priest, the, the very core of the Asante people. And my teacher had told me about this. Kwasi Bedu was my teacher in Los Angeles, who was a visiting uh, master drummer from Ghana in the 60s. And he told me about the, this music and dance. 
he could dance it and I saw him dance it, but he really taught me the drumming and I never thought of being a dancer, but I watched him. Anyway, I got on, I played, they thought I was possessed because I could play, but they really didn't realize until afterward, told Frank that I'd been studying this drumming. And they said, you know, dance. And so I got up and I can do the dance right now. I knew how to do it because it was connected to the drumming. Drumming and dance are, are, are together. They can't be distinguished from each other. They're two in one as languages and singing. All of it is comes together. I'm not a singer and I'm not going to try to sing, but I learned the dance because I was there and I saw it. So the, the, the long answer is yes, I could and I can still do that dance because I saw it and I was there. Um, but it, it is the drumming brings the ancestors to the person, to the spirit of the people there. And if you feel that possession, you can become an ancestor. That's what possession is. And that ancestor can in, be in your, in your take your body for hours, could be minutes, but it can also be days. And then at that time, people would come up and ask you as that ancestor advice uh, about all kinds of family relationships. I mean, it could be anything. It could be finance, could be anything. And that ancestor would speak through the person. And um, let's see, do I have a photograph? I think I have a photograph of it. Here it is. <laughs> That's a really amazing. Yeah. Oops. Uh, so uh, yeah, here's, a, here's a photograph. This is the, uh, this is the uh, event right there. Okay. Okay. So well, you, you see, the yes. gentleman in blue shirt um, is uh, Frank Mensa, and the, the gentleman to my left is Sarpong, who's the master drummer of that village, and he's also the teacher at our university, and the gentleman in front is the priest. And behind, you see a woman in white. i got to get it right here, over here, uh, right there, dressed in white. She is has been possessed. So the, when you get possessed, you are actually taken away, dressed in white, and brought back. So those are, those are called the Akom drums. And that is in the small village outside of uh, Kumasi. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that kind of explains why so much of an effort was made to take our drums away from us. Yes. Oh, yeah. But well, go ahead. One, that was that was one reason but the main reason um is that they can talk <laughs> they can be used to communicate in uh this is uh this is a really important point that dr snare drums and the drums in a european military group can be used for signals um but that there are three modes of drumming according to kwabana and katia uh, renowned ethnomusicologist. There's dance, speech, and signal. Those are the three ways that drums can be used. And the speech, the speech mode was never really known to Europeans. But in Africa, everybody, I say everybody, most people know that drums can talk and they understand the language. Uh, when you have a, uh, there are tremendous diversity of languages. So when you have a particular village that has one language or a particular area that has a language and they communicate to the end of that language area, at the end of that language area, another drummer would be bilingual and be able to translate that language to another language and send that on to the next language area. So that's the way communications would happen over enormous areas in Africa very, very quickly. So news could be broadcast, uh, you know, for in the past hundreds and hundreds of years, very rapidly. And so eventually enslavers figure this out and they that's why they banned. Uh, there were only two uses, uh, the Stono Rebellion and the, uh, the German Rebellion uh, that had uh, drums actually used um, for uh, organizing and bringing about a rebellion during enslavement. But there were many other uses. Uh, there's a tremendous video by a, a Dr. Chris Johnson, Christopher Johnson, uh, on YouTube, and it's a TEDx talk, very short 10 minute piece. I encourage people to look it up, and it talks about this very thing about how drums, um, you know, were used for 
communication and how the whole evolution of drums brought about uh, in this country uh, all the way up to the drum set. And he ends with a reference to Max Roach and how, you know, African drumming is embodied in a drum set. And uh, the implication is, is that the rhythm section um, is the is the culmination of African drumming in this country. And if you think about a rhythm section as being a guitar, bass, and drums, <laughs> that's pretty important in all music in this day and age. And if that indeed came from African drumming, that says a lot. So... Yeah, that, that's really amazing. Um, when I think about drums and, and I listen, I notice how connected drum beats are to words. I was listening to a drummer just yesterday and it was just amazing to me how connected they are to everything that happens as you have a group of musicians playing. Uh, but the other observation that I wanted to make, you know, when I asked you about the question about dancing was that it takes tremendous coordination to be a drummer. I mean, I've, I've played a little bit, I'm a pianist, so I'm a percussionist from that perspective and I can make sense on a hand drum, but when it comes to having two sticks in hands and two feet on two different pedals and making all that happen at the same time and making it make sense, oh man, it, 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 so if you can drum, you have to be able to dance. Yes, some of the best drummers are dancers. Yeah. Yes. So, right. and, and you think about Juba and you think about tab dance. Greetings, Hamtonio. <laughs> What's up there? How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? Good to uh, see you. you know, it's, all, it's always, always good. Always good, my brother. Good to see you. Yeah. Everything's drums. all right with you? Everything's good. Thank you. Yeah. It's just mm. uh, crazy busy like everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, pleasure being back on the show. Um, we're talking about drums. Yeah. So the, the whole thing. Yeah. I did my master's thesis on uh, Tony Williams, uh, drummer, uh, started with Miles Davis at age 17. I got to know Tony very well. And uh, yeah, he, he took it, a whole, took it to a whole new level, um, this coordination of hands and feet. Um, but the feet in West Africa are used on a drum called the gome. And it was used in... Uh, uh, it was brought to this, uh, to the continent, it was brought to the Caribbean um, with uh, various instruments that are played with the feet. And it's a, you change the pitch with your foot. So the idea of using your feet with tap dance and, and drums is not uh, foreign by any means uh, mm. to the beginning of the drum set. It was hooked right into the drum set. You know, it's interesting that, that you say these things about drums and you know, a common thread of conversation on our show is culture mm. and the importance of culture and knowing culture. And when you talk about the way drums were used and the way that ways that we communicate, I mean, when you talked about drum beats and drum sounds being a language of themselves and then being translated and being bilingual as a drummer, this is just blowing me, blowing me away. That's something that, that we should definitely know. And I, I think when you understand these things, it gives you an even greater appreciation of culture. You know, yeah. obviously you've been able to study that. Well, drummers have a language that we talk drum beats. For example, if I were to say a, some rhythms, so I can say the whole ensemble with my with my mouth. I can say the shaker and the drip bass, and I can put all those instruments in. Uh, if I play it, if I make it a drum set sound, it's chang 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 So I can say the sounds of the various instruments and mouth them at the same time. And lots of most drummers can do that. Uh, we just learn to say the sound. We learn to say the sound of our drums. Uh, the rudiments of flam is like the sound of the two drumsticks coming together near the same time. So, and then the first thing you learn is mommy, daddy, that's a right, right, left, left. So we, we, we talk the, the sound of the drum all the time when we're learning it. Yes. In Africa, it's the same thing. My teacher, <laughs> uh, Kwasi Bedu said, uh, you know, we chew in rhythm <laughs> and it's true. 
uh, we chew when we eat, we chew in rhythm. And the, the rhythm is a part of, uh, as you know, a part of, of a deep part of our life with born with a heartbeat. So it's just that a lot of people deny that, deny the rhythm component of their lives. And uh, it's, it's extremely important <laughs> to us as drummers. So as we're having this conversation, uh, let's talk about the role of drumming and music as a tool of liberation. I know Thank that uh, in the past, you know, there have been songs that have been associated with the civil rights movement and so forth and so on, but music has been with us for so long and it, it plays an intrinsic role in our evolution and our development as being. So could you talk about the music as a tool for liberation? It's a great point. That's a great subject. Um, and if you think back to um, after emancipation, um, there was a uh, the the last ship that came over was the Clotilda, uh, and it was a wager that um, a former uh, uh, an owner of company uh, said he wanted to bet to see if he could sneak a boat in. I think probably know the, probably the story. The story. Anyway, so. Anyway. Uh, Gentlemen, do you know that story? Yes, uh, I, I know a little bit of it because there's a local playwright who did a play about the Clotilde in Mobile, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, so Kojo Lewis, um, there's a, it's, it's, uh, I'm quoting him in the, a book I'm writing on African, we're calling it American African Drumming Origins to the Present. I'm writing it with um, uh, uh, Oluk Balamans. Um, it's, uh, it's in process right now. Um, anyway, I can talk about that later, but the, uh, the, the Clotilda and what he did is start Africa town in Alabama. And the, the, uh, the idea was, he said, you know, as soon as they were emancipated, uh, the first thing they did was make a drum and play it. Um, and so the, the whole idea of, of drumming as resistance, um, you know, when it was banned and gradually banned, uh, beginning at the very beginning uh, in the 17th century, and then the laws came on uh, gradually. The drums were not allowed in Virginia and Georgia and so forth. Drums were banned. Um, that music um, had to express it in lots of other ways, and so it went to the black church. And the black church was the the place where this really took hold. And the community found ways of expressing everything that needed to be expressed, work songs um, at the very beginning, then spirituals and gospel uh, evolved into, you know, the blues. I mean, the sequence is well known uh, within academia, but um, it's, um, it's a profound story that uh, Eileen Sutherland talks about it in uh, Music of Black Americans. Um, it's a tremendous, uh, tremendous work. Um, I could bring it over here and show it to you, but uh, there, there's a there's a lot in the in the literature that talks about uh, the bigger story, the longer story that starts at the beginning of enslavement and brings the whole story forward uh, through today's music, hip hop, all the way up to the present. Hip hop is the is the is today's version of it, and. Uh, um, you know, you go through all the the or the groups of the 90s that pushed back against police and pushed back, and all of it was based on a beat. And if you go back to the last poets of the 60s, <laughs> the the fundamental instrument was the drum, were the conga drums. Uh, African drums did not appear in any quantity from the direct ones, so the only drum that was used in the 60s was the conga drum until more djembes and other instruments were brought, uh, made available. But um, the uh, David Nelson, I worked with him at one point. He was one of the original last poets. And he, uh, he talks about this, about how the drum was the foundation and the fundamental unit of, uh, and rhythm was the fundamental unit. So, and they pushed back the last poets. Um, but that, I think of them as the beginning of hip hop Okay. Uh, but hip hop has brought the story forward. So, yes. <laughs> okay. 
So uh, we have our brother Hamtonio with us and uh, there are events that are taking place this weekend, uh, today and tomorrow. We have Asara uh, Imhotep coming in today for a lecture and we also have uh, Dr. T. Owens Moore coming in tomorrow. Uh, and there are some other events that will take place later in the month, but they're all related to a local organization, the Carter G. Woodson Project. So Brother Antonio, uh, I know you're navigating, uh, facilitating this today. Uh, why don't you come on in and, and tell us about what you have planned today so that folks can get a head start on the information that they need for that. I think my mic is muted. Okay, no, yeah, can not. you hear me now? Okay, yes, it was, but yeah, but yeah, okay. Yes, uh, yeah, are we... We definitely, you know, uh, I work uh, with Dr. Woodson, you know, he's a friend of mine. We do some things together and uh, we both have, a, well, he has a, a paternal interest uh, to, I guess, uh, to Dr. Carter G. Woodson in the family. And he, he does, you know, we talked, we had him on the show before and talked about his uh, connection. I didn't know if y'all got into that towards the top of the hour. But, uh, you know, with Juneteenth and and expressing black history and black history uh, through 365, that's what it's been all about. Uh, and that's what the, you know, the struggle been for African-Americans, you know, uh, to do this. And, and so, uh, and, and Carter G. Wilson doing what he did. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do is just keep this hope alive, keep this information going. This is the age of information. So as the Carter G. Wilson committee, uh, we putting on a weekend event uh, to bring in knowledge because we want this uh, holiday since we've been blessed with the holiday. You know, we, I don't know we, why we have to wait to be blessed with the holiday when it's something that is important to us. I don't know why we got to get blessings from somebody else in order to for us to take hold. But that's where our conscience is as a people at this point. So uh, what we're going to do, we want to keep this a uh, 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 time frame in the whole month of June to where we bring in information commerce is happening you know uh businesses and we supporting each other and sharing information so this weekend we want to make it a powerful weekend um brother sar Imhotep is is here in town uh, we had a little uh, dinner last night and the brother young brother is, is is you know i have to commend him for doing this research as a uh, linguistics and 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 uh you know, and, and really putting the time in and working and, and the brother's dedicated to what he's doing. Uh, he says, <laughs> might not get through all of them, but I might have to cut them a little short because Dr. Moore is coming in. But he's he said he got, he's brought over 100 slides to show us and talk about uh, what's going on today. So if you, you enter getting your knowledge and, and connecting the dots, because we can't open up the spirit and the mind until we get our consciousness together. You know, and that's what I think we lack. And so to this evening, uh, we're going to open up about uh, this afternoon, uh, about two o'clock here over at T-Squares. Uh, come on on and support the uh, the marketplace. We have a few vendors. We'll be here. We're playing a little music. Uh, our good brothers, uh, I think you know them, Dr. Woodson, uh, Brother Hassan, uh, and by, uh he's going to be in with a, the troop. We're going to have a little drumming going on. My brother, Keel Marshall, should be here as well. He might do a little speaking. So you could come early. And, and uh, you know, get yourself relaxed and ready for the lecture. Dr. Uh, uh, Qua David Whitaker is going to be here. He's going to open up as well for, for our good brother, uh, Asari Motep. So it's going to be a powerful, for, powerful day. We're going to have a little uh, sample of uh, African food for you guys to, uh, to sample as well. So we, we, we ain't going to hold you this long without feeding you something. So we got a little something for you uh, to eat as well. So it's going to be a great weekend dr moore uh what well, dr um brother sar imhotep is uh he's he's gonna be talking about kemet and the cultural unity of africa and i'm sure that's something dr wilson can talk about in his travels in africa because there is a common thread that go out that permeates throughout the continent of africa and we need to understand that uh and that's very important and and my good brother tomorrow uh dr moore is going to talk about you know, melanin and and connect this whole thing to the cultural, uh, I mean, to the global at least control and attack on humanity and getting us prepared and getting our minds eyes together on what's going on out here that that can be actually cause us, some, you know, as a people, as a human race, some problems that these global elites is doing in order to uh, 
continue control on the source it's very important weekend y'all so we can't we have to make june june uh, not a rib toting holiday you know let's keep it to where we, we we're uh, sharing information and don't let nobody in no other culture still you know are our, our we should be the ones promoting this not other corporations you, you know nobody goes in there take old santa domingo or any other holiday for any other ethnic group we should be the driving force and we should uh, force other corporations and businesses if they're going to do something and want to do something for us get one of the local organizations that's been doing this and, and fund them to help them put it in because who can best do us than us you know nobody can do us better than us so so it's a great powerful weekend, and we got that ball coming up on the 25th, and that's gaming a whole lot of steam. And, you know, folks are really getting excited about that at the Mediterranean on the 25th. So it's going to be great. It's going to be great. want to talk about the elephant in the room as, as we approach Juneteenth. And Dr. Woodson and I talked about this yesterday. And I, I guess the question in my mind when it comes to Juneteenth is what are we celebrating? <laughs> because the, the story of Juneteenth is that at a, at a certain point in time, uh, some folks did not know that uh, they had been quote unquote freed. So it, it took a while for them to finally find out that this happened. So here we are a uh, hundred and however many years later, and now we have a national holiday to commemorate the fact that somebody was lied to. Uh, Dr. Woodson, can you, cook, can you put some perspective on that? Uh, yeah, I, um, I actually watched the, um, there's a great piece by David Wilkins, uh, in the Minnesota branch of Asala, uh, on Juneteenth. And I encourage you to go look at it. Uh, but he brought up the, um, the, uh, the, I guess it's the Boston. I didn't see if I got a better shot of it. Here it is. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's the Galveston daily news broadcast, uh, daily paper that, sh that mm -hmm. talks about this, if you can see that. Yes. Okay, so it, it uh, anyway, if you go to the web, if you go to the website, you'll see the, uh, the uh, YouTube piece that he has on there. Uh, and that's, it, it says, uh, uh, let's see if I can read it here. The people are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, um, that all slaves are free. This involves the um, ability, absolute uh, property between former masters and slaves and the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. <laughs> the freedmen are advised to remain at the present homes and work for wages. They are in Informed that they will not be allowed to collect at um, uh, military posts and that they will not be supported in, uh, in idleness either there or elsewhere. <laughs> so that's Major General Granger. That was the, uh, that was the on June 19th, uh, 1865. So there you are. That's the uh, that's the document that uh, David Wilkins presents uh, on this. But he talks about it. But I, I take your point. Um, you know uh, why is is that such a celebration? Um, but as Lynn has said in the past, you know you use uh, you use the event to uh, celebrate in the eastern states uh, in a, at a time when the weather is 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 on our side um uh in june so but uh lynn has done a phenomenal job as for years doing the celebration of carter woodson um with parades and up to the pandemic uh it's been just a a, a huge operation that you put together uh brother lynn for all these years and bringing in the woodsons um i'll jump to the subject um briefly of the genetic uh connection i uh, had my genetic uh, uh, profile done and Michelle Oliver Woodson uh, did hers and we compared uh, the, what's called the Jed match and the Jed match came up at 3.8 uh, below three there's nothing significant three 
uh, is kind of the bottom rung and seven is the top uh, in this particular scale. And we were a 3.8 and uh, we did that as uh, we videotaped actually this, <laughs> we looked at it and, and uh, Michelle said, oh my God, there's the number. So it was, it was a shock in one sense, but a relief in, a, in another sense, because we knew there was family connection, but we didn't have the genetics. So white people have genetic connections to African-Americans as we need to understand and know because of the history of this country. So that's one of the goals of our Woodson group that uh, black and white Woodsons are coming together. As I mentioned earlier, Lynn, with Vince, that we're trying to uh, take this with the good help and advice of Reverend James Lawson. Um, I spoke with him yesterday and, um, you know, he's going to help us kind of move this forward to uh, what we're going to do next. And I'm not sure how it will be uh, be received, but I'm assuming it, some people will accept the message and some people will resist it as they're resisting so much of history today. So we have to recognize on the white side, we have to recognize these issues uh, in a serious way and take on the mantle of being an anti-racist, not just saying I'm not a racist, um, mm -hmm. which Ibram Kendi uh, has very nicely defined for us uh, in his work. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's also interesting thinking about other families and one that comes to mind is the Jefferson family. Mm. You know, the the uh, the relationship between Jeffersons and the Hemings and so forth and so on. And so now I think they're kind of navigating a, a, a new terrain, so to speak, with this understanding that we're related and and what can we do to be uh, better to each other, so to speak. Well, you know, the Woodson connection there, maybe or not. Oh, no, anyway, you can tell us. OK. Sally Hemings firstborn is a Woodson. Uh, because he was uh, blue-eyed and red-haired, uh, uh, like Thomas Jefferson, he was given away to a Woodson, a relative of Thomas Jefferson. We're related, so um, there's a there's dispute within the Woodson family. There was a book <clears throat> written by uh, forget the first name Ball, the Ball family, about uh, he, the title. I think is called Slaves in the Family, and the book we wrote. Uh, and I said on the Woodson side was written by, I think, John Woodson, <clears throat> African-American writer, said uh, presidents in the family <laughs> as a counter to that. Uh, so the stories within the Woodson family are very, very firm. They've tried to project uh, genetically there was not a connection. But the, the fact of the matter is, is within the oral tradition, within the Woodson family, there is a very strong story that um, we are related uh, genetically to uh, Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson through Sally Hemings. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the short story of that uh, piece. Okay, uh, let's talk about what's going on uh, on the local level. I know uh, you mentioned that uh, that Lynn is vice president of the local chapter, uh, and you also mentioned that you have something that's going to take place in Sandusky. So, do you want to talk about your your local momentum? Yes, uh, we are, uh, Lynn, uh, jump in as you wish, um, but we are trying to uh, reconstitute after the passing uh, transition of uh, Gail uh, Rose, who was the, the founder of our uh, branch in um, Cleveland, the Asala branch in Cleveland, a couple of years ago, and through COVID, uh, membership dropped, and so now we're trying to get uh, our group back together again. I took it on um, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, but I'm going to be stepping down at the end of this year in December. Uh, and we want to, to get the membership uh, back up. We want to get uh, the web presence and social media presence. And Lynn is helping with uh, uh, the Cleveland area. I'm in Los Angeles a lot now with my significant other and an illness here uh with her and uh so i'm i'm here most of the time and uh, unable to get out into the community and and uh, have a physical presence so uh but we need to have it uh promoted and i appreciate the opportunity here to uh to do that um mm -hmm. anybody who wants to join they can uh email 
me, you can put my email up. Uh, Lynn, as you wish, uh, put yours up. You can call me. You can call my number. Um, I'm available. My my information is all over the web. If you just punch in Craig Woodson, it'll come up. Um, yeah. So the uh, the connection is uh, is available, and all we need is for the the members, uh, potential members, to join the national uh, at the website, asala.org. And then the, we have a $20, uh, per year, uh, local membership due, uh, dues that, uh, needs to be paid directly to us, uh, at our branch, uh, in, yeah. uh, in Ohio. Yeah, I was, uh, I, you know, it's, it's, it was, you know, I began, it was funny cause I began doing the work about Carter G. Woodson prior to knowing about Asala and see, and he, you know, and people need to know that, organization was started by dr woodson way back <laughs> you know way back and a lot of prominent people across the country are important as a, as a part of it and so by you know we caught on ourselves carter g woodson project and doing things to to uh promote history uh promote our presence and and the things we have done and our contributions to this country you know, it, it was like a, you know, a marriage. And so we're reaching out to some of our listeners to, to join because it's, it's nothing that, you know, it's the same thing in what we're doing. You know, if you're about wanting to put uh, programs together and help promote programs to, to, you know, for our kids and our adults and, you know, things that you think it is valuable, you know, that's what, that would be the only obligation that you're doing is just helping to facilitate uh programs you know to 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 get out the right messaging that we want to you know be out here about our history and who we are so it was like you know a marriage you know that pretty much most of the things that i do is is in is in alignment with with the whole asala and what it's all about so that's why i tag uh asala with most of the things that i do now because it's it's Carter G. Wilson's original founding organization. So we're reaching out to the to the public. Come join, be a part of it if you're interested in in doing some things. And we I think the conference is coming up in Jacksonville, Florida in September, Brother Craig. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you know, so if it's something that you want to do, we we actually can take the take this uh this particular local branch and and do something with it and and uh put it on the map you know one of the things that craig wanted to do and uh, and i think that's some of my role is 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 to put a um uh, uh, a grounding touch to it you know we we you know uh we can be with some of these organizations that be a little academic on some things, but we wanted to put the common touch on it with the drumming. That's what, that's why Craig uh, stepped up and did what he wanted to do, you know, with the drumming and, and the cultural and the food and stuff like that. And I think that's what some of the, you know, I think that's what we can bring to the table on our end, you know, here. Uh, so come on guys and give me a holler and you join and, help us out and you know you know the things that i'm doing and you can help me do this and you can actually take the lead on some of these things right and i'll, I'll take if it uh give you just a, a moment i'll show you this book you you know this i know but uh it's black history 365 uh it's 1200 page a high school textbook um they now have uh, uh the kindergarten i guess it's first grade through eighth grade books written for this and you can find this at bh365 uh dot uh i think it's dot org that maybe it's dot com anyway uh but look up bh365 education i guess it's also called but that is a tremendous resource and um the book that i'm writing uh is a supplement to that on african drumming and i'm doing it now i'll, I'll mention my good friend uh, uh who transitioned years ago uh, baba david coleman um here and uh, we opened for the Carter G. Woodson home in 2017, the two of us uh, playing at the, at the opening. Uh, and the opening will be official uh, this coming September to the public. Actually, they, they put up, a, 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 this is in Washington, about 10 blocks. It's in the Shaw District, right behind, uh, seven blocks from the White House, roughly. Um, and the home is now open with a museum. They bought the building right next to it, and so it's a whole museum complex. Um, it was open to a private group uh, back in, year, years ago, but now the whole complex is ready to be opened to the public, and that'll happen uh, coming up on the 19th, I believe, of September. 
um, and uh, in Washington. Um, uh, I just made my hotel uh, reservation, uh, 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 and I'm presenting two papers. I just finished the two papers I told Vince earlier. So uh, for the Jacksonville, and it's on Black resistance. So it's about the drumming and how drumming can be has been over history used as uh, resistance. Um, and then the Woodson story. So, okay. Yeah. Could you talk about what that that conference in Jacksonville is going to look like? Some of the subject matter, perhaps what you just mentioned, and some other topics. Yeah, it's it, the subject is Black resistance. That's the theme for this year. Um, and so, you look online, you'll see the papers. There are a tremendous amount of number of uh, presentations, uh, uh, authors. They have a whole section on uh, recent books and past books. Um, uh, they have, uh, I'm going <laughs> to bring a drum, so I'll do some hey, 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 Craig, yeah, uh, in the meeting, didn't they say something about, uh, they was going to, uh, so some of those res res restricted books or something they was going to read, yes, uh, yes. did something with those, uh, I'll yeah. the tail end of that. Could you explain that a little bit, what that was, because some of these books was banned and they was going to, some of the books that was banned that they was going to do something in reference to that. Yeah, I mean, what I understand is that they are going to um, they're going to present those. And uh, again, it's the activist part of the organization. And uh, they put the conference in Jacksonville specifically for this reason to push back against uh, the policies there. Um, so, yeah, they're going to display them. And um, I don't know the, the latest details. And I, I'll check in on that uh, with Barbara and Sylvia. But, uh, yeah, it it's it's coming together. It's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a very, very a seminal kind of event this year because of what's been going on. Um, so mm -hmm. we're, we're, you know, in all the, there are 40, what now 49 branches around the country and we have our monthly meetings. We just had one this last Thursday about finance and uh, uh, taxes and so forth. So we, we have very informational meetings uh, once a month uh, on the board. Anybody is invited. Uh, you don't have to be a, a member of a, of a branch. You can just come and <laughs> get, a, get a sample of what, uh, what we talk about. Um, so there's a lot of openness that's at a, at a solid. It's not for academics only. It's for uh, the general population. And that's what they're promoting, as I mentioned earlier, events the, with the young people. We really, really want young people to get involved. And it's starting it's little by little. Oh, hey, 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 uh, 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 you, they mentioned real quick, you know, we want to get this in that we can offer what was the two memberships for, for, for the school, high school yeah. or, or yeah. students or something. Yeah. Get two right. free memberships. Four. Yeah. Right. Four in the area. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, four. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, we're just about out of time. Uh, I definitely want to uh, give Brother Hamtonio another opportunity to trumpet what's happening this weekend. And uh, we're so thankful and grateful that Dr. Woodson was able to join us today uh, to sing the praises of history. You know, I, I just, I marvel at his knowledge. And uh, I think there's so much that we can learn about ourselves through his connection with the music and through his connection with the culture. And just the very fact that uh, that DNA is something that we share. We got a few local folks that are actually part of the Woodson family. A very good friend of mine, Robin Robinson is a Woodson and her sister Kim Woodson still bears the Woodson name. So uh, this, is, this is, it's a small world to say the least. It's a small world and there's so much connection. And one thing that I've learned in life, Dr. Woodson, you can never judge a book by its cover. Thank you. You know, there there is just so much that we have in common and our differences are so minute. But I'm really thankful that you have the mission that you have and that you have been able to raise awareness about the importance of our culture and the relationship of music to that. So thanks again for joining us on 360 Info Network. Thank you for having me. My All, right, there, brother. Honor. All right, brother. Thank you, All uh -huh. right. Brother Hamtonio, you want to give us the details on what's happening today? Yes, come on, Ani. Let's get our knowledge on. We yes, if you're attending this weekend, uh, you, we on uh, was well, South Miles, across from the Word Church. But we you need to access uh, South Miles from Lee Road. Do, do not access from Warrensville Center because they have the road blocked. So come in from uh, 
from Lee Road to access through Lee Road. And so the brothers, you know, I talk with, I, I, like I said again, brother Saw Imhotep, he's going to be, he's going to do well. So I, it's going to be a great presentation. Come on out, Dr. Moore, tomorrow. He's ready. He's going to do his thing. So come on out and be a part of, of what's going on this weekend. And don't forget that ball on the 25th. That's going to be marvelous. You're going to be able to sample African food. You're going to have the drum in there. Uh, you know, and then also, that's right, Dr. Brown is opening up for Dr. Moore on Sunday. So my good brother, Dr. Brown, will be here on Sunday as well. So come on out. Okay. Yeah, you, you definitely can't lose. With our dear friend, Dr. Brown, you know, he just brings it when it comes to matters of health, when it comes to matters of spirituality, our connection to uh, one of the greatest civilizations in the history of the planet, and that is the, the history of Kemet. Uh, so he brings it. So, yeah, you got you got a, a I don't know, you got a double header tomorrow and you got a double header today and that uh, Dr. Kwa David Whitaker is going to open for uh, Asar Imhotep, who has always amazed me with his his knowledge of linguistics and all of that. It's just it's amazing to hear what they have to share with us. So I strongly encourage folks to show up today. And that's 18450 South Miles T Squared Honors Academy. And you'll have to access that by coming from Lee Road. Don't try coming from Warrensville Center Road because you're going to run into a block and then you're going to have to go all the way around. And it's going to be so much more time to get there. Uh, we like to thank our engineer, uh, Tone Harley. He has been able to bring us through on StreamYard, and we really appreciate him for doing that. We also want to thank you for listening and tuning in. As always, know yourself, love yourself, be yourself. Make today your absolute best day. Peace. 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 Thank you. All right, my brother.